Hello, and welcome to the Akuma Chicago Tech Center for this episode of IMTS Spark Advanced One Touch Programming Tips and Tricks. I'm John Sanowski, Senior Tech Center Coordinator, and I'm accompanied with Mark Hamlick, Application Engineer from Akuma America. Uh, today we'll be providing a general overview of AOT IGF, also known as Advanced One Touch Interactive Graphics Function. We'll be covering turning and milling using DXF input for geometry and relying on the process to side feature to automatically select tools and apply speeds and feeds based on materials. We hope you find this presentation beneficial by shedding more light on Akuma programming. Enjoy. This is an image of the demo part we are going to use, which was created in SOLIDWORKS and the profiles were then exported in a 2D DXF file. The center section is our turn feature and the face contour is our milled feature. I would also like to mention we will not be having the Q&A session, but feel free to submit questions in the dialog box and we will get back to you. Let's start a new program. From Run Display, I will switch to Edit Mode and pick IGF Data tab and start a new file. I will need to assign it a name. Let's go with a Spark AOT. Once I hit OK, a new screen will pop up displaying dialog that will allow me to enter information about my stack. As you see on this screen, there are several fields already filled up with the default settings. Type of material that will define cutting conditions for each operation that we will create. There's also several predetermined settings like uh, shape of the stock, size of the chuck, and jaws, etc. All I need to do here is provide the information about diameter and length of my blank. I'll go with a four inch diameter blank, seven inch long. After hitting OK, graphics updates uh, and shows cross-section of the blank and jaws. Now we will create a new process to turn the shape on the OD of the part. Here I pick turning and software prompts me to start defining the profile. Since the shape that contains several segments, there is pretty good chance for a typo, let alone it's time consuming. Instead, I can choose the DXF file read and use a file that has geometry converted from a solid model to a 2D geometry containing all the entities of the profiles. Let me find that file. It's in a DXF folder. Okay, here you go. You see two shapes, open OD contour that we will turn and close profile of the packet that will be machined on the face of our blank. Since each shape is on its own layer, I have the ability to pick which geometry will be used for cutting in particular process. I'm going to hide my packet geometry and work with the OD profile. Once I confirm the shape, okay, AOT generates a spreadsheet that has all the information about each segment. So at this point, I need to close the profile to let o AOT know which area will be machined, which area will be left over. So I use for that jump function. And AOT provides start point coordinate shortcut that fills up my X and Z of the starting point. Okay. In the next step, I will use process decide function that based on register tools, will pick the best colors and create operations to machine OD profile. It creates the chart that shows we have uh, two tools for this operation. One of them will cut towards the chuck, remo mo removing most of the material. The other will cut away from the chuck, removing material left over by the tool number three. Now, to verify the process, let's watch the animated simulation. AOT creates new chart that shows separate operations at 
in the last column, we can see the cycle time for each operation and the total time at the bottom. Once we leave the animation, now we have an ability to adjust feeds and speeds and depth of cut for each operation. So at this point, we have turned the OD of the part. Let's take care of the pocket and the face. I will start the new process. I will pick multi-machining, an area, pocket, right face of the part, and I will use CNX machining. At this step, I will uh, specify the size of my cutters. So I have a 3 8 end mill for roughing, quarter inch for finishing, and we need to define the shape of our pocket. Instead of typing coordinates of all segments, I will use 2D geometry from the Excel file I had utilized previously. So I go to free shape, the Excel file read. I will find my file. And again, I see both uh, shapes in the same file. I can decide which one I'll be working on. Okay, let's hide the OD profile, confirm the shape, and next step will ask me how deep is my pocket, so we'll start machining from zero, and depth of the pocket, let's make it 150 thousandths, okay, we'll need to define where our end is going to enter the part. So instead of plunging, okay, I'll decide to go in zigzag. Okay, I, my entry point, start er, entry point will be at zero, zero. Length of the zigzag, one inch, at zero direction, and four degrees zigzag. So at this point, AOT created roughing and finishing operations for pocketing on the face of the part. To get the program verified, I will go to process test. I will scroll down past the turning operation just to watch the milling operation. And let's see. Okay, there you go. The, the entire part has been machined. Thanks, Mark, for that demonstration. Uh, I like the part that you selected in this and that it's not your typical uh, stacked part where it starts out small and goes large. Um, and then the fact that you also had the milling in there. Um, let's go back on uh, speeds and feeds and making adjustments um, to the actual, um, uh, you know, whether it's depth of cut or speeds or feeds on any of the tools. So I can, I can make adjustments to any one of these tools, right? That is correct. Once you are the pro part of this program, um, AOT creates a spreadsheet that uh, will allow you to um, change feed speeds and depth of cut on fly. Any field that's uh, with a white background can be edited. Okay, great. Now, as far as uh, creating another material, uh, I saw that in the first screen that you selected, there was a, a number of different materials that you could pick. Can you uh, show us how to maybe create a new, um, uh, a new field that has um, different uh, feed rates for, let's say, like an exotic material? So we have to leave the actual edit mode, and then we can go to a um, advanced settings, material data setting, and we click on the open field, and then we can copy an existing, uh, uh, existing material. And at that point, we can rename it. Uh, let's say, titanium. And and then all the operations that are included can be added and customized for this particular uh, material. Oh, okay. So I see we have you know, roughing, copying, uh, finishing, threading, tapping, grooving. Yeah. Yeah. And in each one of those, you can specify uh, what your Correct. Uh, rate, the, the, they finish rate. Could you make a selection to one of those yeah. so we can see that? They can be 
um, okay. that they can be customized. So we can adjust, you know, surface speed, finishing stock on the X and Z axis, oh, okay. and uh, feed rates. Okay, yeah, for you have different see, type. Yeah, I see. You have rough. Uh, you have rough and semi-finish and finish. Uh, so there's a, a number of different selections that you can make. Great. Okay. Uh, that's good to know. So I can define basically any of that uh, information. Uh, from what I understand, you had loaded a number of uh, tools uh, into this, and uh, basically the process to side will pick from that information. Uh, this, that information can also be used, or the geometry of the tools can be used also in, let's say, CAS, collision avoidance? Correct. Okay, so... Uh, let, let me show you the tool data page. If I go to a, a OD tool, for example, Okay, now we see, okay, I can have a roughing OD away from the chuck and finishing OD away from the chuck. I can add some other um, uh, operation possibilities, okay? So I can rough face and that, you know, this tool be, will be considered by AOT when uh, uh, process this type button is pushed. Oh, okay, great. Um, let's take a look at running uh, from AOT or running from a G-code program. So and once I go back to edit mode, um, I can um, run this program two ways. I can create a program, um, uh, uh, create a G-code program, and basically just pushing the button, just program just created the code. So let me show you, demonstrate it. Okay, I got to go to NC. And there you go, Spark AOT min program, okay? Um, on top of uh, running from the G code, um, the program can be also executed from the AOT, like a conversational. So once I save that program and switch to our save and machine, okay, now I got a list of all my operations, and oh, I can run each each uh, each process each, each process tool. separate, and then uh, on top of that, okay, I can make any changes on fly. So you could make this. This is this is running right now, uh, or we can run this, uh, and you can make the changes here on this screen to any of the feed rates or depth of cuts. Correct. Uh, Without going back to edit mode, I can uh, adjust feed speeds and the depth of cuts. Uh, right here on the screen. Okay, great. Um, one thing I noticed that when you were uh, cycling through, uh, or I should say uh, testing the program, that it was going at a high speed. It was very quick and hard to see. Okay. Uh, can you go back to that and slow sure. that down? Sure. So uh, let me open the edit mode. I'm going to go to process test. And then there is a high speed on and off. So in a normal uh, simulation, we will see a lot slower uh, animation compared to for a quick high-speed uh, verification of the program. And I see as, as that's processing, uh, right now it's on rough OD. Correct. And it will come out with a... Um, cycle a cycle type for this time particular that. operation. So, so that, something like this can be utilized for, for uh, time studies as well. And it's doing right now the ramping. Right. And so that's a zigzag that I picked uh, as a way of uh, entering the pocket. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, I think this gives us a good uh, example of um, you know some of the capabilities of uh, AOT uh, utilizing uh, DXF as an input. Uh, however, you could also use uh, geometry segments um, as well. It doesn't have to come from a from a um, CAD yes. file, but correct. Using a DXF uh, really, you know, limits your liability on something like that because it's geometry that that came so, from, let's say, a customer or some other entity. Thanks again for spending the time with us in this demonstration of AOT IGF from Akuma. Stay tuned for some of our other events. January 12th, Adaptive Control with Karen Engineering. January 21st, Preventative and Predictive Maintenance. February 2nd, High Speed Machining. We hope to see you at these as well.